The people get into real estate the way we do it, I'm not talking about the people who already have money like uh, Donald Trump and stuff, but the way we do it with no money, no credit, etc., only about 3% ever succeed. 97% wow. fall about the wayside. Welcome to the Investor Syndicate Podcast, where we interview real estate investors and entrepreneurs, giving away the playbook to help you guys on your road to success. And we got my very special sensei, Bob Kim, in the house today. Now, Bob was one of the first people who actually held my hand through the process of getting started when I first decided that I wanted to plant the stake in the ground and become a real estate investor. I reached out to Bob because he ran a local meetup here in Columbia, South Carolina. So to this day, I call him Sensei Bob. <laughs> Without further ado, Bob, welcome. Well, thank you, Ben. I, I think uh, you give me too much credit. I mean, uh, that you you took everything and you took the matters into your own hand. I you know we we had a you know really nice lunch and whatnot, if I recall, and you just literally took you know what we discussed and just ran with it yourself. Not many people do that. So, uh, thank you for those kind words, but they're very tough to live up to. So, <laughs> I appreciate you, man. I've always seen Bob as having a, a go-giver mentality, right? Like he's always giving away information. He's always helping new investors, not going out to lunch, always picking up the tab, right? And just giving away the blueprint. Like, hey, this is what you need to do. And then accountability, right? Like you have, Bob would literally get in the car sometimes in the middle of the night and go help people put up bandit signs. Oh, <laughs> that, that's fun. I, I, I just like to see people succeed. Uh, one of the statistics that really hit me is nationwide, Ben, less than of the people who get into real estate the way we do it. I'm not talking about the people who already have money like uh, Donald Trump and stuff, but the way we do it with no money, no credit, et cetera, only about 3% ever succeed. 97% wow. fall about the wayside. You know, so I'd, I'd, it'd be nice. There's plenty. There's plenty of deals out there for everybody. So I'd like to see that success rate much higher, at least in our markets. Yeah, so. I love it, man. So I'd like to really rewind the tapes a little bit and let's talk about where Bob first discovered the vehicle of real estate. Like, what was that turning point in your journey where you're like, "Wow, real estate looks amazing, sounds amazing. I'm gonna dive in." Well, I'd heard, uh, I mean, this is back in like the 80s, late, mid to late 80s. I remember uh, my mom was actually a realtor way back when. And, of course, we didn't know things like, you know, now, it's funny because my training is as an engineer. You're not like a finance person. Yeah. But we didn't know anything about, you know, return on investment and stuff like that. I figured the cash flow, you know, is fine. And my mom actually sold me a house and I put 40% down. So obviously cash flow. And I thought this is great. But when I finally started taking real estate seriously, um, it was one house in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. And uh, when I started taking real estate serious, I held about maybe 15 years and then I sold it. My, my annual return was a little less than 1.2% a year. And uh, when I finally knew what numbers to look for, and I said, you know, maybe this isn't such a good thing. I could just put in a money market and done better. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but fast forward a bit, um, I was doing research on the Savannah River site as an engineer uh, down in Aiken, South Carolina. And um, I was pretty tired of my job. Uh, I, I'm sure most people can relate to them having a boss they're not particularly fond of. Um, the work, I did a lot of lab work and it wasn't particularly, you know, adventuresome or anything. And uh, anyway, what happened was um, around that time, uh, the Department of Energy was who really ran that site. And there are budget cuts everywhere. Now, my job was safe because I was a lowly paid lab engineer, basically. Okay. And I started looking back into real estate, you know, the. And not not just the landlord thing. I began I began looking into and back then we didn't have like Google and YouTube like we have now, but I, I began looking into the whole house flipping aspect and whatnot. And they didn't have like HGTV shows and stuff like that. And uh, anyway, I I picked up a book on wholesaling at uh, I think it was 
uh, was it a books a million I can't recall which bookstore it was it might have been a Barnes and Noble and um, I wholesaled now I wholesaled my first house and uh, the total work to wholesale it was about 45 minutes of total work and I got about a third my profit about a third of my annual salary in about 45 minutes worth of work and I was walking out of the attorney's office you know check in hand I was like did this really happen? <laughs> I said, crap. Now, back then, I was single, really no responsibilities except to myself. So um, I said, heck with it. You know, I just told my boss to take her job and stick it, and I just went off on my own. Wow. So, uh, and then there are some rough spots because it, that's around, that's in the middle of 2005 when I quit my job. As you, as you know, shortly thereafter, we hit the 2007 2008 recession. Oh, yeah. Where I didn't learn from how to handle that. So that was a little rough. So where did you first hear about wholesaling? Like, where did you hear the buzzword? Did you go to a conference? What what cued you to walk in a bookstore and say, I want to find a book about wholesaling? I, you know, I think what happened was, um, that's basically what it was, was I, was I was looking for a different life, if you will, out of, outside of engineering, because I've been an engineer all my life. And... Um, I looked in. I started looking into real estate itself, and then this whole concept of wholesaling came up. And I was like, "Okay, what the heck's wholesaling?" Okay, and then th the first course I actually bought was uh, it's called um, because it's affordable. You know, it's cheap. Okay, what can I say? It was actually by a guy named Steve Cook. It was uh, called Wholesaling Houses for Fast Cash. Okay, okay, and it literally was just like a notebook on how to wholesale. Wow. And all these great ideas. And then started saying, get involved with the local RIA. And then I started coming up to the one here in Columbia. And um, I, the, one in, the one that I started coming up to is no longer around. But uh, that's when I started getting into wholesaling. So that's, that's how I heard about it and started digging into it. Wow. But once you started getting your feet wet, got your first deal done, that made you a believer. It right? Did. You're like, holy cow, this is possible. It's real. It's tangible. I have a thousand dollar you know ten thousand dollar check in my hand if i could just multiply this two or three times i can replace my current job wow that's right? correct what did what did the next several years from that point look like like what <laughs> what what did you learn in the early stages of failing forward and having to build your your business from the ground up okay as you know i i, I quit my job uh in the middle of 2005 and i'm motoring along here and I'm putting, I started out as actually a rehabber and then a, you know, with the occasional wholesale after that first wholesale. And uh, I was doing okay. And what happened was uh, I didn't know how to find good contractors and whatnot. And uh, th there's a saying, if you pay peanuts, you're going to hire monkeys. Okay. <laughs> so uh, so that, I, was, I was trying to be cheap, you know, and uh, that was a mistake. So I was hiring unlicensed handymen and stuff like that. And it was like babysitting. And Ben, you see, I used to have a full head of hair before I started rehabbing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, and anyway, I also learned, you know, I fell under the hip, the illusion, success is, success is a lousy teacher. Bill Gates said that. It, it fools you into thinking that you can't go wrong. And as you know, what happened shortly thereafter is the 2007-2008 recession. And I took a beating during that because I had a lot of money out there. And I didn't realize, you know, maybe I should maybe pull back a little bit and hold yeah. some in reserves. Like, and we, we discussed a little bit earlier today. I, I see that kind of happening right now as well. Yeah. So the difference is, is this time I know how to handle it. <laughs> okay, yeah. So. <laughs> Interesting time in the market right now. It is. I mean, shit has kind of hit the fan. Stock markets plummeted. Crypto getting destroyed. Hasn't fully hit the real estate market yet. But you can all, I mean, the institutions, the lenders are tightening up. We're starting to see the hedge funds cut back a little bit, right? Raise their cap rates. Um, but yeah, it, it could get could get messy. Yeah, I just saw a Facebook post that someone, a mortgage broker is offering no doc, remember no doc loans? Yep. They're offering no doc loans in like 26 different states. And I saw this all before 2005, 2006. And actually, I only, I only ever had one mortgage in my own name. It was actually a no-doc loan. And um, I, fortunately, I paid it off, but it was, a, it was a bit of a drag on me. And uh, this was a this was a 
mortgage I got, I was actually hospitalized. It was in 2007. I was actually hospitalized, so I had people sign for me. And I remember the mortgage broker saying, uh, Bob, I got to put down here how much you owe. This is on, he's on the phone in in George in Augusta, and uh, so he goes, Bob, I got to put down on the form here how much you make. Just just tell me fifty thousand or something. Just make something up. I was like, I can't believe this. He's not going to verify any of this, and I got a mortgage that easily. Wow! So it looks wow. like we're going back to that again.